As dawn break in Oji community of Barasa State on the 28th of November 1999, residents were awoken by approaching sound of ferocious gunfire. The town was put in disarray as everyone scampered for safety. What was happening was the question on the lips of every citizen of the town. So, what really happened? Who ordered the attacks? In this edition of Hispul Media, we bring to your view the story of Udi invasion in 1999. Please stay tuned. Welcome to Hispul Media In Depth History. Udi, a small town with an estimated population of 60,000 people as at 1999, is located about 43 kilometers north of Yenegua in Bayasa State. In a manner only fit for external aggression, the town witnessed ferocious attack by the Nigerian armed forces on the 28th of November 1999. The attack came in the context of perennial conflicts in the Niger Delta over indigenous rights to oil resources and environmental protection. It is estimated that over 2,400 civilians were killed in the attack. Now, before we continue, please take a moment to hit the like button on this video and subscribe to our channel. It will go a long way to help us. Thank you. But what about Odi? The invasion of uh, a village in Odi where some where the whole village was wiped out. Of course, if you have if I have soldiers and police who are the instrument by which I should maintain security. And I send police and they were killed. And I send soldiers and they were killed, what do you expect me to do? If you were in my position, what will you do? You will fold your arms? You answer me, my dear brother. So, what really happened in Udi? Well, the Nigerian army, in response to the killing of about 12 policemen on the 4th of November 1999, and in the days that followed, had been ordered into the town by the President and Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces, Chief Olushigun Obasanjo, the murder of policemen was committed by a group with no apparent political agenda, but took place against a rising clamor from those living in the oil-producing areas for a greater share of the oil world. Following this killing, the Nigerian president Olushigun Obasanjo wrote to the governor of Bayasa state, Dear Prayer El Namesia, threatening to declare a state of emergency if those responsible for the murder were not apprehended within two weeks. But before the deadline could expire, soldiers from the Nigerian army moved into Odi and engaged in intense exchange of fire with the young men alleged to be responsible for the death of the policemen and proceeded to raise the town. The troops demolished every single building except the bank, the Anglican church and the health center and may have killed hundreds of unarmed civilians in the process. While the soldiers reportedly shot and killed some of the armed youths who brought trouble to the town, most of the gang members were reported to have fled the town before soldiers arrived. The operation was coordinated by the Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Victor Malu, along with the Chief of Naval Staff, Vice Admiral Victor Ombu, and the Inspector General of Police. In his book, titled In the Name of Victor, Confronting Errors with the Truth, the then Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Victor Malu, explained what happened. According to him, Udi Town is a community predominantly occupied by Ijo people of Niger Delta. Trouble broke out in the community when on the 4th of November 1999, seven members of the Nigerian police were murdered by a gang near Udi. More attacks and murders continued in the days that followed, bringing the total number of murdered policemen to 12. This development was both troubling and unacceptable to the presidency, and so the military was brought in to intervene. According to him, the operation was not just an army operation. The army, the navy, and the police were involved. Every institution, the navy, army, and the police had specific roles to play in the operation. The role of the navy was to deploy flat bottom boats on the creeks to ensure that none of the gang members escaped through the creeks, while the role of the army was to cordon off the city to enable the police go in and search the area for the hoodlums who had killed police officers and soldiers. According to Victor Malu, the operation was well planned 
to avoid collateral damage to civilians and property. On the D-Day, November 28, 1999, the operation began as planned. The road from Kayama to Wari was blocked so that vehicles would not interfere with the movement of troops or tip of the people. Also, no vehicle was allowed to overtake the military convoy. The military convoy continued for approximately 80 kilometers without any hitch. However, about 60 kilometers from Udi town, the military convoy encountered an ambush. The former chief of army staff suspects that either someone in the army, the navy, or the police had tipped off the people ahead of time. As a result, the operation lost the vital element of a surprise. The bandits and the hoodlums had known well in advance that the military were coming and got prepared for them. The ambush was so ferocious and well orchestrated that three soldiers were neutralized on the spot. As the military approached the outskirts of Udi town, they encountered another ferocious attack from the hoodlums. They were shooting at the military from built-up areas. He said, By training, soldiers faced with deadly threat do not throw up their arms in the air and hope that the enemies will be merciful and spare their lives. They return fire to take out the threat. We are not police officers. We do not fire in the knees. If you fire from your building, I will dislodge you from your comfort zone by taking out the building. This is exactly what happened at Udi. The soldiers had no option but to return fire and save themselves from what otherwise would have been a cold-blooded massacre of soldiers carrying out legitimate orders. No soldier, he said, will shoot at a civilian who posed no threat to him. As soon as the shooting subsided, the soldiers moved in, but by that time, the bandit had escaped towards the creeks, he concluded. Now, the question you may want to ask is, was the mission a success? In attempt to answer this question, the former chief of army staff blamed the Navy and the police for the failure of the operation. The Navy failed to cordon off the creeks as planned, making it possible for the attackers to escape through the creeks. The police on their own path was nowhere to be found. Malu explains that the mission of the army was to assist the police in maintaining law and order and had no business with search and arrest. The operation was directed by the president and commander-in-chief of the armed forces, Chief Olushigundo Basenjo. In February 2013, the Federal High Court ordered the federal government to pay 37.6 billion naira in compensation to the Odi community of Kolokuma Okpokuma local government area in Bayelsa State. The compensation was ordered to be paid within three weeks by the court. In his ruling, Justice Lambia Kambi of the Federal High Court criticized the government for what he called a brazen violation of the victim's fundamental human right to movement, life, and to own property and live peacefully in their ancestral home. The government of President Goodluck Ebele Jonathan negotiated and paid 15 billion naira as out of court settlement. The Udi invasion remains a watershed in the annals of Nigerian history. Let us know your thoughts in the comment section. Click here to watch our story on Asaba Massacre of the Nigerian Civil War. For more interesting history stories across Nigeria and the rest of Africa, please like this video and subscribe to our channel. And I will see you in the next video. Thank you very much for watching. Peace.